talk about how all Adam does is like whine and complain and is so annoying. Hey friends, welcome back, it's Maria. So let's talk about rock, paper, scissors. Let's talk about that ending and how wild it was. If you wanna see the five minute review with no spoilers, go ahead and click the card right here. Um, that is my five minute review. But if you wanna talk about that ending, let's get into it. Okay, so here is the synopsis of the book, right? So if you just need to jog your memory, go ahead, take a look at that, read it, screenshot it um, so that you are good to go. But I'll kind of go into it a little bit anyway. So, right, we have Adam and Amelia, a and A, the dynamic duo who hate each other. They have won a weekend away in the Scottish Highlands, right? And I love the writing in this book because the desolate isolation of where they're going and the icy storm outside is such a good parallel for their relationship, right, within their marriage. There's a storm outside, but there's also a storm between the two in their in their marital life, right? And so they're in this car and Adam hates cars and you're like, okay, maybe the guy just gets car sick, right? So he's already on edge because they're on like an eight hour drive to Scotland. They get there and they're staying at this like creepy chapel, right? That has been converted into a house, but it looks like no one has been there for a really, really long time. Which I think is also brilliant because like we're talking about their marriage. And this place is set in a chapel, which used to be a church that has been converted. And I think there's some kind of, you could draw a metaphor or a parallel there, right? That like their marriage isn't what it seems to be, just like this chapel isn't what it seems to be. And I think that is so interesting. I just really loved how she set this up, um, at least with like the setting and stuff, because you can really see yourself there. Um, so they get there, a lot of creepy things happen, and you kind of learn that they've fallen out of love with each other, or at least... Adam has kind of fallen out of love with with her and Amelia is trying to save their marriage because things are going wrong. Um, and then weird things happen, right? Like where you're like, is he trying to kill her? Is he not? And the whole time you're you're just like, oh, poor. I, I felt bad for Amelia, right? So this is written between his and her perspective. And Adam just seems like a whiny jerk the whole time, right? He just is whiny all the time. He has face blindness and, he, and that's really driven home. He can't remember faces and he can't see faces. And she just is like wanting his approval. And they all make these like snippet comments like, oh, maybe one of them will die. Maybe they're gonna kill each other. No one knows, maybe they're just gonna leave each other. But like he literally is trying to scare her away because he's too, honestly, Adam is the worst. I think he's he's too scared to like leave her, right? So he's trying to push her away by locking her in a cellar and saying, and turning off the generator to make this whole area creepy when really it's just him. And I honestly found them both kind of insufferable. And the only reason that I, right, and I said this in my five minute review, the only reason that I really enjoyed them is because of the letters that were written between, um, from, Adam's wife, right? She doesn't let him read the letters, but they're letters that she has written. They really recap their year in marriage, right? And they're always listed with like a medal or paper because that is the um, gift that the, that anniversary signifies for year one, year two, year three, year four. And so when you see that, you're like, okay, well, they're more relatable as a couple because obviously they've gone through some marital issues and they love each other. But the thing is, Adam is so different in those letters compared to what he is now. Right. And she and Amelia, whom you think right in the beginning is writing these letters, is also completely different. So you're like, let me read, let me read this. Girl, when I tell you, when I found out that Amelia was not the one writing the letters, because Amelia is Adam's second wife, I kind of lost my brain. Like my brain, it, it exploded. Because that 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 I everything that I had read. I had to like relook at and it made me feel bad because I was starting to feel bad for Amelia. I mean, I kind of still feel bad for Amelia because Adam is horrible, but like she's the homewrecker. She's the one that broke up the marriage and stole her best friend's man. And then he married her. And so then I'm like looking back through everything, right? Where you're like, okay, so one, we find out that she, Robin, is his first wife who's writing all these letters. So everything that you find out about their marriage for the last like 10 years is actually from Robin's perspective. 
So really, I think Adam and Amelia have only been together for like a year. So you find out that Robin is actually Henry Winter's daughter. And Henry Winter, if you remember, is the author whose novels Adam has adapted, right? And that has been a huge secret in their marriage, right? Because we don't know how Adam, suddenly the screenwriter, got to adapt Henry Winter's novels into screenplays when he's never let anyone do it. Well, ding, ding, ding. It's because um, Robin is his daughter, his estranged daughter. She actually doesn't talk to him, right? And so what does she do for Adam? Because here's the thing about Robin. She doesn't seem like her whole personality is Adam, right? She's made him her own personality. So she calls her estranged father, whom she doesn't like, to then ask him to let her husband adapt his, screen, his novels to screenplay. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. That's the first secret in their marriage that honestly is, is the catalyst for everything that is the downfall in their marriage, right? Because then Adam gets that and he's suddenly working all the time, right? All the time adapting things. He is obsessed with Henry now, right? He considers Henry to be like his fa like a father figure to him, which he doesn't realize he kind of is because that's his father-in-law. Um, and that obviously is an issue for her because when we find out in the letters, she thinks her father killed her mother, maybe. But he never showed her any love. You hear that? That's my dog. So she really doesn't want anything to do with him. So then when you find out, he's like, he's been stalking them at all these parties. He's had someone trailing them. She, no wonder why she freaked out when he was in her house, you know? That situation, when he, she showed up to her house, I think on her anniversary and he was there, of course she freaked out. Of course she freaked out. She was like, I do not want this man in my home. But you can't, she couldn't tell Adam that because it was her secret. And that's when she should have come clean, right? So you're like, okay, well, no wonder why she hates Henry so much and doesn't want him around and is always ignoring him. Because you're like, in the beginning, you're kind of like, well, that's rude. Like, you know, he loves him. And yet you're not going to, you know, and you're the person that tells him at parties who's who, and you're just going to conveniently ignore the fact that the person that he really likes is at the party following you, Henry, um, because you don't like him. Well, now we know there's a reason why she doesn't like him. Um, so that is interesting. And there are a whole bunch of clues sprinkled in, right? Because Adam, like I said in the letter, are com is completely different with Robin than he is with Amelia. With Robin, he wanted kids. With Robin, he seemed, you know, happy and full of life. Um, and so... You're like, what happened to them? What happened to them to make them this bitter couple? Well, that's why it's so shocking when you find out, well, it's because they're not the same couple. Flash forward. There was a saying in this book that I was just like, damn, when are we going to find out when this, when his wife cheated on him? Because we know he cheated on her, right? It has been said. But he's like, you know, it's so convenient. You always say that, we always say that I cheated, but you always forget to say that you cheated too. So I'm like, when are we going to figure that out? Friends. It's because he's married to Amelia. And Amelia was the girl Robin befriended at her work, right? Where she's doing the Lord's work, helping save dogs. She befriended this lady, helped her get a job, only to have her steal her man, right? So when he's talking to his wife, Amelia, about cheating, he's like, yeah, I cheated, but you cheated with me and broke up my marriage with your best friend. So all of those comments he makes about like, not being able to trust her makes sense because she literally stole her best friend's man. I feel like you, I mean, you can't trust him either. So it's kind of like pot kettle, but I mean, you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense now. And then the whole time you're like, I don't understand. Cause there's so many things that happen, right? Remember when Amelia threw his paper crane into the fire? No wonder why he's upset. She didn't make that crane for him. It's one thing that she threw her own paper crane into the fire, but she threw robin's paper crane the very first anniversary gift he got from her into the fire which honestly if you're not married to that person anymore and you're married to someone else maybe you shouldn't keep their gifts i don't know maybe that's disrespectful to your current spouse whatever so then you're like okay so robin is henry's daughter henry's actually a total jerk to her but henry actually liked adam um and adam is like I listen to this and the guy who is the voice of Adam has like the best baritone it is so good too bad it was like spent complaining and whining the whole time but so 
That's all Adam does. Can we just talk about how all Adam does is like whine and complain and is so annoying? It's like the whole time I'm like, Amelia, why are you with him? Like, what about him? What about him? Right? He can't do anything. Robin have to do everything for him. You have to do everything for him. All he does is like collect and steal your joy. Use you to, to get to where he wants to go and then forgets it. like your birthday, can't even recognize you, doesn't even remember your anniversary, spends more time working on his own stuff, thinking about himself, working, than spending time with you on both occasions. And then he had cheated on his past wife with you and then he blames you for, for them for getting married. Like he's like, you seduced me and then you convinced me to get married within like that year. Sir, take some accountability, okay? He's just a horrible character and I'm not, I don't understand why anyone, I don't understand why these women are obsessed with him. So then we get to the end, you find out Henry Winter's actually dead. They're stay, the chapel is Henry Winter's house, right? That he's renovated. So Robin obviously knows all about it, right? That's how she got that as a getaway for the couple, right? It's because she owns it. Um, and you find out in the, last, the two years that she hasn't been married to you, um, Adam, she literally, her, all of her hair has suddenly gone gray or, or white, like all of it. I don't know, I guess like the stress. Um, and she is like eating tin food all the time now. And she has like a pet rabbit. Um, I guess her dad was really fond of rabbits. So she has a pet rabbit now that she hangs out with. Um, and she's kind of been doing all kinds of weird stuff because if you remember when they show up to the um, chapel, they're staying in a bedroom that looks exactly like their bedroom at their house, which makes sense because Robin's the one that decorated their house, right? So she made it seem like a creepy style, <laughs> single and female, hello, um, that they're, she redid their, their bedroom in the chapel to look exactly like her house, right? Prior to when um, uh, Amelia moved in weird right and she's the one that let them into the chapel um and so you get her perspective right so you get adam and amelia's perspective and then you get the letters the yearly letters and then you get um snippets of robert's perspective so while this is all going on right you have this like main plot of those two getting married who's gonna die who's who surprise robin is the real wife not the real wife but the first wife you also have this subplot of adam's mom in her red kimono, who was killed by a hit and run. And so he has these nightmares about it, right? And he, and it's interesting because they talk about the different perspectives that he has these nightmares from, and that he can't remember um, the face of the person who was driving the car, even though he, he actually saw them, right? And so every time he has these nightmares, Amelia helps him, like wants to write down like what, what he can remember and you think it's in hopes of him remembering what had happened. So that is a, a subplot, right? That's happening. And you find out in the end that Amelia, right? So you, Robin writes his letter. You find out in the end that Amelia actually is the one who was driving the car who killed Adam's mom. And now he's married to her. What? What kind of bad craziness is that? Am I right? You're like, what? And he doesn't know because he can't see faces. So I'm just like, dang, Amelia, first you're gonna wreck his marriage and then we're gonna find out that you killed his mom. So then he's got the gall, the gall to act surprised, right? He's like, oh my God, Amelia. Because it, this all comes to like uh, a culmination where he's reading this letter that Robin had, you know, sent him explaining that she is Henry's daughter, that Henry had a private investigator that had been following them for their whole marriage and that he had found out that Amelia, um, was a car thief and got into trouble a lot when she was a kid, which we all knew she kind of had, she was an orphan and she had a hard time with her childhood. So she was always in trouble. Um, and that she had actually killed possibly cause she never was charged for it. Adam's, um, mom. And then that leads to like a whole fight. And then she, Amelia goes to stab him with scissors or a knife, I think. Which is interesting because it makes you wonder if that was her whole plan. Had he remembered it was her, would she have killed him anyway? I think so. I think so. I think that's probably why. I think they allude to her, you know, having him remember things just in case he does remember something. So she could tell and then murder him maybe. 
And then, you know, Ami uh, Robin comes in and like stabs her and then she's dead. And then she's like, you know, take me back, Adam. And he's like, okay, I'll take you back. Because she's now um, writing under Henry Winter's name because no one knows that her father is dead except for, you know, those three. And apparently she's a really good horror writer because people can't tell the difference between her writing and her father's writing, which we've seen we've seen how some of those go and you can usually tell the difference in the writing style, so, but whatever. Um, and so he's like, yes, I'll take you back, even though he, the man cheated on you with your best friend and doesn't have time for you and is a whiny baby all the time and kind of sucks. They're like, we're going to get back together. So then they're like, okay, we're going to leave now. So obviously she wants her <laughs> the engagement ring back, not for herself to wear, but she doesn't want Amelia to have it. They can't get it off her ring, off her finger. So they cut her, her, her uh, finger off because honestly, they're like, we don't want someone who killed Adam's mother to have her wedding ring. That's kind of crappy. So they cut off her finger, right? And hide it instead of just like getting rid of it. And then flash forward, it's a year later, they're back in the house, living, laughing, loving. Girl, the, the plot twists don't end there because you know what? It happens next, you find out. Adam killed his mom. He was driving with Amelia in the car with him. He just didn't realize it was Amelia at the time. I knew we shouldn't like that man. And now he's telling us he actually is the one who killed her. He was the one driving because he was mad and he was drinking and Amelia told him to go faster and Amelia told him to steal the car. And he just listened to Amelia like he does in everything in life, apparently. And so he was the one that ran over his mom and his dog um, when he was a child. So there you have it. And then the very last chapter, right? Well, and then actually, and then he says, you know, something along the lines of like, um, you know, now I can move on. Now that I have closure, I can forgive myself. At least that's the biggest lie, you know, that I've ever told myself. So then we move on and then we have Sam, who's a private investigator. We get one little chapter from Sam and he's like, oh, you know, I haven't heard from Henry in a while. Let me go see what's going on. You know, and so he had developed a relationship with Henry over the past 10 years since he's been following his daughter, right? Trailing her. Gets to Henry's house and he finds out that he's dead, that, she, that he is dead. And you're like, what? And then he finds the finger with a ring on it. And it's like, what is happening? But he starts to tell you a little bit more about Robin, right? And from Henry's perspective, Robin was a difficult child. So Robin had told us this whole story about how as a child, you know, she um, wrote stories in school about how her, about how a father who was an author, who we're assuming is, she was actually writing about her father, um, murdered people like the way he did in his books. And then when she came home, Henry was mad at her for writing that and told her, you know, she had to write, I will not tell tales. And then in the middle of the night, he like cut off her hair. And you're like, wow, what a dick. No, this guy was like, Henry had said that actually Robin cut off her own hair to spite him and would make up lies all the time and ran away. And that Henry actually really loved Robin and really loved um, Adam, like he was his own son. But from Robin's perspective, that's not the case. So you're left wondering who is really... Who is really the issue here, right? I mean, Robin did kill someone and Robin did lose her mind, right? When she got back to the, um, to her house, she literally started, you know, she had a pet rabbit that she kept, her hair turned white, she just ate tinned food. Maybe she, uh, who knows? But here's the thing. When you have familiar relationships, you never really know who's telling the truth and who's not, right? I have so many friends we're like, oh, my mom and my dad, not so many, but I have some friends who have been like, especially in high school, my mom and my dad are horrible, right? They don't want me to do X, Y, and Z. But you go to their house and their parents are, you think these amazing people, they're so kind. And I've also had vice versa, where I've had parents be like, my kids are terrible, but you would never think that because little Jenny or whatever is so sweet and so kind. So you never really know the truth. That's a he said, she said, and now Henry's dead. So we'll never know the actual truth. So maybe, you know what? Maybe Adam and Amelia, or maybe Adam and Robin deserve each other. But honestly, that whole book was a wild ride. There's so much in there that you're like, oh my God. 
I think my favorite scene is Robin digging up her anniversary gift, which was, I think, a willow tree. Was it a willow tree? Digging it up when she found her man, her husband, and her best friend in bed together, dragging it through the house and throwing it in their bed and then leaving. Like, you go, girl. Wait, wh where was that energy a year later? Why did you take him back? That's all I want to know. Like, why? But you know what? They all lie to each other. Adam, just as a horrible person who killed his mom and also slept with her best friend, but it's fine. We'll take him back. Now they can, you know, make their books together. He can adapt them into a screenplay and live happily ever after in this kind of fantasy world. So there you have it. Um, I hope that explained the ending. If you are confused, essentially the key points here are Robin is Adam's first wife who has written all of the letters. Um, Henry Winter is her father, and that's the connection between how she got Adam his writing, his screenwriting um, rights. And Amelia was Robin's best friend at the place where she worked, and she slept with Adam. Um, and then at the end, we all found out, it all came out, and Robin killed Amelia, and then we also found out that um, Adam killed his own mom. On accident, obviously, but by taking no account ability himself. And then um, we don't know if Robin is actually telling the truth or not about her childhood. So there you have it, folks. I love this book. I was just like, what? What is happening? Ah, the whole time. So um, and the more I think about it, the more shocked I am. So definitely check it out. You know, I gave it like a 4.5 stars. It's just really hard for me to give anything five. I just feel like we give out five stars for like everything these days. And so um, I think there is some stuff that, you know, could have been tied up a little better or just didn't make sense. They were um, red herrings throughout the book that led nowhere. Like how Adam knew how creaky each of the stairs were and seemed like he'd been to the house before, but he never had. Um, the actress, October, that whole thing where they alluded to like maybe Robin killing her. Maybe she did. I don't know. Um, just a lot of red herrings in there that didn't make sense, but I think they help create the mystery and intrigue, but I think there were too many. Um, I don't know. It was so good. And then like when Adam said, like my favorite quote, there are four less shady than my wife. <laughs> Died. Although he's pretty shady himself. All right, I will see you the next one. Happy New Year. If you guys celebrate New Year now, I know Lunar New Year is coming up as well. So happy New Year and I will see you in the next one. Bye.